Hello, welcome to another part of the Pyro Simulation Smokes. So we have everything in place now to then create a flip book. So that's what I'm going to show you here in this video. So we're going to go here into our tool and we're going to make like another system to actually take care of doing the flip book. So to do that, we actually need to have access to the output network or the ROP network. So this is basically for like rendering things out. So we're just going to place this node over here. We can dive in the node. And then here we can type in flipbook. And this will then uh, be the flipbook textured node. So if you can see that here, we can, for example, make a flipbook that's like 1K resolution per frame, 8 by 8, which will return in like an 8K texture. Now, before we can actually start to render these things out, we of course need to say the camera. And of course, we need to define uh, the, the big volume path, which is then basically. Uh, this node. So first of all, let's create a camera and we cannot just simply here make a camera because camera is only allowed on object level. So we need to create also an object node here as well. So we're going to create an object network and in here, we're going to open this and then we can just make a camera. So we have a camera, as you can see, you can play around with this. You can check where the camera is currently. So it's now just sitting at position zero and to make things a bit easier for us is i want to automatically capture uh, my volume here i want to make sure that my camera automatically sort of like captures this volume so the way i will do this is i will go here to my camera settings i'm going to go to the view options and first of all we're going to make sure it's a square so i'm going to set the resolution to for example uh one of these doesn't matter that much you can always tweak that and importantly is I'm actually going to switch into like a orthographic fuming mode. Now, the reason for that is if I would now right click here on my handles, I can now here switch to different handles and I'm going to switch to this handle over here. And with this handle, this is basically now the capturing region of my camera. So everything inside this box will basically be seen as capture area. Uh, so we might can, so we probably want to like tweak this. So this is the orthographic width value. Now, first of all, we need to figure out how large this is. Uh, and this is going to be controlled by the user as well. So what I will do is I will just simply make a grid. And I'm just going to make sure the grid is just two rows and two columns. Very basic grid. I'm going to set the size to, let's say three for now. And let's here visualize uh, our smoke and let's template our grid here. Now, what I want to do is I just want to then rotate my grid like so. I'm going to do the match axis. And I'm going to say that this should uh, be minimum. So it's always at the bottom. So I'm going to here switch back again like so. So this grid is sort of like marking what my capturing area will be. If we go back now to this level, we are losing that information. So what I will do is I will create a null node here and I'm going to enable the guides. So I'm just going to type in guide. I'm going to go to my digital asset. I'm going to go to notes and we are going to say guide geometry. And we're going to here find our guide, press accept and apply. And now when we go back, we sort of like have a guide here in this view. So basically everything in this frame will be captured by the camera. So of course we might want to tweak this and I'm going to go back to my digital asset here. I'm going to go to parameters and I'm going to here grab the size three. So we can here place that and press apply. Um, so I'm going to call this a capture area. And this can go from maybe one to let's say six and press apply and accept as well. And we're going to here grab this code and we're going to paste it over here as well. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to stick to a simple uh, square shape. You can also try to do rectangular shapes, but for this other, I'm just going to keep it simple and stick with square shapes. So now if I go to my flipbook settings, 
I can basically now make this larger or smaller. So when you have like a very large simulation, so as you can see, like I don't necessarily have like a large simulation going on. Uh, I don't need that much space, so I will probably just fit it like so. We can like quickly tweak this on what we would like to have. So once that is done, uh, we also now need to link this value, which is currently number three, into the orthographic width. So we're going to copy paste that path that we had, but this will probably return zero. And that means uh, because we are actually diving in here into another node, into another level. So we actually need to add uh, another one like this. And now we'll actually get that number three. So I'm going to copy paste this here as well. And what we also need to do is we need actually need to move our camera up so we can here move our camera. For example, we can move it like so, maybe move it a little bit backwards with the one and we can move this up based on the size divided by two. So we're now basically centering that camera always like in the center of that position. So that is done. Our camera has been set up and now let's try and do a test run of that. So we need to now link everything in the flipbook node. So here, first of all, we need to say, what is my camera? So we're going to here, go into our network. This is an object and camera. So here you can see that this will again, like make like this whole link to the position of that. This is sort of like a bit hard coded to specifically the object, the tourist one, spider smokes tutorial, but we can actually do uh, similar like you would do like referencing. So we're going to type in this, we're going to type it more and more again. We can see that we can now have access to all the nodes on the other level. So we want to, of course, uh, get access here to the object network. And then here we want to get access to that camera. So we're going to do it like so. So now it's not necessarily bounded to that location. I'm going to just do the same here as well. And I'm going to find here the baked volume. So here, pyro big volume. Then furthermore, uh, we have, of course, the starting and end frames. Currently here, it's set back again to 240 frames. I don't necessarily want that because if we want to have an eight by eight, I'm just going to simply press 64 frames. Then uh, we actually here then have the size of the texturing. Uh, so right now we will actually have an 8K texture, which is pretty large, of course. Um, so I'm going to automatically here make a lower resolution. So now it's a 2K result, but of course we have like a quite low resolution of each single frame. Uh, then furthermore important here is the coloring space. By default set here to this one. Uh, you might need to install this or set this up. If you don't have this set up, you can just switch here to, for example, linear or the Houdini default one. So in this case, I'm actually going to just going to use linear. And also since we are working with grayscales, it won't matter that much in my case. Then next up, we have here the composite view. Uh, so we can, for example, say I would like to preview the final color and it will open here the composite view. Uh, so currently, it's, you probably won't see anything because I've not rendered out anything. Uh, interesting here is then, of course, the export options. So we can export a lot of different textures and data. So of course, we have our final color. So this is like the default output or final color RGB with alpha. We can, of course, have the emissive with also a depth texture. Then also here we have both uh, multi-directional contribution textures. In case you need that, we also then have motion vectors and normal vectors. So you can see that you can get some quite advanced and interesting textures out of this. Uh, so if you want to have like extremely the basics, then we can basically, for example, turn all these off and then say, we only want to see like the colors. I only want to focus on having the colors of this. Um, so then we also have like real time shaders and some interface options, but basically the tool will work now. So let's do a test render here by just clicking on render. And you should see this menu opening up and now it will start rendering. So it should start doing some things here. When it is done rendering, you should probably have the M play open here and you will see how your texture will look like. So currently I see like I did not enable my looping. So this is definitely not loopable. And I can also see that maybe my smoke values are a bit too intense. It's like a very thick uh, layer of smoke here. You might also have the situation where it's going to render out every single texture, like color, emissive, 
the multi-directional maps, the motion vectors. So here we can control this in the render pass control. So when we open this, we can actually define how many times can we do this. So here, if we just gonna press render, it's gonna simply render all of them. So if we only know that we want to have the color, then we're just gonna skip every single one. If you know that you might be interested in also having, for example, the normals or the depth value, then you can leave this on. So we only gonna render out what we need. So if I now here just press this big render button, you will now see that we're only gonna render this once and then we have our texture here again. You can also see that with pressing this render button, we automatically have the texture stored at location uh, of the export. So it's now basically based on the hip file and export. So that's interesting to know. So now let's combine this a bit more into our tool. So we're gonna go and grab our digital asset, of course. And we're gonna here go into our flipbook settings and we want to grab this render button and drag it over here and press apply. So now we have control over the capturing area and then the render control. We probably also want to have control over here, the resolution frame and also the rows and columns. Uh, so I'm going to just both grab them here like so, so we can control that outside the tool and press accept. And let's go back to our tool. And then we are basically uh, almost done with this tool. So let's hit play again. And now I can define actually tweak. So first of all, we need to go into the solver. We can, for example, say maybe it needs to be like less intense. We can just tweak this down, make it like very subtle, for example, like so. Uh, we can hit loop. And we can check how the loop went. So the current simulation will look like this. Uh, we can, of course, here increase our quality of the simulation, but I think for now it's good. So we have this as a result. So I can still fine tune a couple things. Um, what we can also do is in our pyro solver, uh, is we can, for example, cut off the bounce at the bottom here. So we have like binary conditions. And as soon as, for example, here, the volume goes under the value zero, we are basically going to close that off. So here we're just basically, as you can see, if I would enable my grid, it's going to close all the volume under value zero. So that might be interesting in my case to have. And I can see that I can, for example, tweak my frame a bit more like so. Uh, we can like, also have sliders to move this to the left or the right a bit and then link that to the camera as well. It's all possible. Um, maybe the temperature is a bit higher, so it will actually fly a bit higher. So this is what I'm currently having. And now just click the render button and it will open the menu. And now in a few seconds, I will have my result. And this is, as you can see, my result. So that's it for this video. So we basically created the final version of the tool. So I can make a basic pyro simulation. I can tweak some values. And then when I'm happy with my simulation, the only thing we need to do is to make sure to set a nice capturing area, set the nice textures, see how many rows and columns you want and press the render button. So that's sort of how this tool would work. It's quite easy to use and can generate a lot of different things with this. The last thing I want to do in this video is I noticed that if my tool now is, for example, closed, so it's locked, so it's not editable anymore. If I press the render button, it's not working anymore. When I open the tool, allow editing, press render, uh, we now like start this render pass. So we will need to make a few changes to have this all working when our tool is here closed. So let's go inside of our tool. First thing that I want to do is in our flipbook texture, uh, we want to go into our interface options and we want to disable here the option to record a render completion time. So we want to disable that toggle. This option to record the completion time uh, requires actually more permission. So we are not able to do that when our tool is actually closed off. Now we're going to go back here into our big volume. And what we need to do is we need to select the big volume and we need to make a sub network around this. And we're going to go inside the sub network and we're going to make sure that there is an output node and of course that our linking value is still working. So that is done. Um, and now, of course, we need to make sure here that uh, our path is now also set 
to, to that subnetwork. So that's just to double check. So those two changes need to be made. Um, so basically the subnetwork is needs to be there because we will also now make this editable. So in our digital asset, we can now go to editable nodes. And what we're going to say is we can now here uh, add that subnetwork one and press apply. For example, now lock everything to match definition. We are basically locking down everything. So if I now would go into the tool, you will see that everything is grayed out except for this. So the tool will now be able to work correctly. So when I now press render, uh, we should now have the menu being popping up to render. And now we have again back our render. So the tool is now basically ready and fully works like expected. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.